Hi everybody, uh, it is Wednesday, June 15th. I am in Tucson, Arizona, and tonight we start Lyle Lovett's summer tour. Um, going to be heading off in a couple of hours to uh, do a long sound check, and then first show tonight. Whew. Been just sitting here, bass, going over material, because um, uh, we have no idea what the set list is going to be, so we're going over all kinds of songs and stuff to hopefully pick the right ones. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, just got off the phone with Russ Kunkel, and Russ is um, heading over to uh, get his drum set up. He's got a new uh, drum tech, and they sent me a picture to show me that my gear had shown up. So <laughs> thank goodness for that. Uh, but I was really so excited about about this opportunity to go out again and uh, and hit the road because it's been a serious drought for a couple of years. Now, I mean, I've done some some short little um, tours like with Kate Taylor and Peter Asher and some a few gigs with the immediate family and stuff, but nothing where I've been out for you know two and a half months. Uh, so th this is going to be great. We're going to we're going to have a great time. The band's unbelievable. The, the caliber of musicians that Lyle puts together are just amazing. But I thought I'd throw some music in just before heading off to work. I'm going to do a little more practicing after this. But I'm going to go visit an album called Moonlighting uh, by Van Dyke Parks. And this was recorded live at the Ash Grove in 1996. I've worked with Van Dyke over the years on many, many projects, um, such as Orange Crate Art with Brian Wilson. Um, I've toured with Van Dyke, where we've gone to, to Graz, Austria, to Dublin, to Tokyo. Um, he's, a, he's a true American treasure as a, a writer, composer, um, arranger, and just uniquely uh, talented individual. I looked him up uh, just to maybe get a, a, a few salient notes on, uh, on Wikipedia, and I just go there and, and look. It's a long bio on there and a fascinating one. So Van Dyke is worth taking a few minutes and really taking a look at, at a, a truly unique uh, life in, in the music business. So I'm going to go over uh, who's involved in this. But this was recorded live. This is a live concert. Uh, and it's Van Dyke. On, um, he produced it, arranged it, composed it, played keyboards, and sings it. Then it's myself on electric bass, Dave Stone on upright bass, Bernie Dressel on drums, the great Grant Geisman on guitar. Then there's the violin section of Peter Kent, Joel Deroyne, um, Michelle Richards, Eve Sprecher, uh, Elizabeth Wilson, John Wittenberg, and Sid Page. And Sid Page is the concert master. Um, then on viola, we have Jimbo Ross and John Scanlon. On cello, Larry Corbett and Susie Katayama. And Susie's also the orchestral contractor on this. Amy Schulman on harp. Uh, it was engineered by Dave Thompson and Charlie Boole, mixed by the great Michael Frondelli, who I did the Barefoot Servants with. You know, he's Michael's an institution. I love Michael. And Kevin Reeves mastered uh, the album. So I'm going to play a few songs from this, but this is really just a, such a different kind of a thing. Um, and it's not the kind of stuff that I get called for because there aren't many people that are quite as unique as, as uh, Van Dyke Parks. And Van Dyke was sweet enough. He's in my book and he just did a video for me and a little hustle QVC type video and uh, much appreciated. But uh, let me play you a couple of songs from this one is called, let me just see if there's any additional information to be gleaned here. Um, um, no, it looks, it looks like I gave you all the info. So here is Sail Away.
Night of June 6, 1857, Gottschalk sailed from Havana to the island of St. Thomas and skirted the north shore of Haiti. The other passengers went below, and as he remained on deck, dark clouds fringed the southern horizon. A full moon shone unobstructed high in the heavens. The mountainous Haitian shore was distinctly defined. As he gazed toward the island, he recalled long buried memories and felt overwhelmed by life's ironies. This is a man that Chopin called the king of all pianists. The man who played for Berlioz, his monster compositions with the use of 60 silver trumpets and so forth. They thought in numbers in those days, not in corporate profit. <laughs> his family went to New Orleans and he wrote this piece called Night in the Tropics. Okay, here's another one. This is Chicken. Here we go. Um, Van Dyke, I mean, I... Playing music with him is great, but I just love sitting and listening to him talk. He has the most beautiful command of language and just this lilt in his voice. He's like Horton Foot. Um, amazing cat. So here's Chicken. <laughs> There lived a little fella by the name of Red Hunter. 
This is Wings of a Dove, uh, but look up his bio. It's, it's nobody has one quite like his. It's, he's an amazing cat. So here's Wings of a Dove.
on wings of a Too many writers that get you can use the word tintabulation in their lyrics and have it just flow through tin tin tintabulation. So Van Dyke Park's Moonlighting and Live at the Ashgrove. Uh, but please look him up. He's he's a he's a force of nature. I mean, and he worked with everybody imaginable way back with Harry Nilsson and Brian Wilson and uh, God, just. Uh, uh, Oh, it's just, it's, read it, read it, it's amazing. So I'm going to get back to practicing here. i got a bunch of stuff to review before heading off to sound check and seeing what I've worked on that we're actually playing. Um, uh, I, I got up, you know, flipped on the news and just saw some of the, the, the monstrous acts that are taking place still in Ukraine, the uncovering of mass graves of uh, old people, children, women, um, the, the horrors that, that the, the Russian army and Putin are, are inflicting are just staggering. Um, I, it's, it's just who would have thought at, at this time in our history that we would have this kind of aggression taking place. You would think Europe and Eastern Europe and all that would have, lessons would have been learned, and, and, but they're never learned. Because when you get a madman in power with, that has just nothing but power and ego, you're going to get what you're going to get. Uh, and we're all potentially subject to that. So we've got to be always cognizant of what, what, what's going on in our countries. But to see the suffering that these people are going through is just so heartbreaking. Uh, and it's far from over. Uh, and again, also watching uh, all of my compatriots that are out there on the road right now that are having issues with COVID. You know, the Stones have had to stop because Mick got it. Um, Ringo had to stop because of Luke and, and uh, Edgar. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these that are, that are hurting right now. Um, you know, the protocols that we're going through are going to be really intense. There's like no leaving the hotel, no ha having guests backstage or anything. This is, uh, this is really bizarre because that's one of the best parts of touring is traveling and, and meeting, seeing people backstage and friends and, and making new friends and all that. But we are in unique times. And uh, so many people are uh, of the mind that it's all behind us. And uh, then it rears its ugly head and boom, you're, you're down for the count. And, uh, and again, my heart goes out and my thanks go out to all of the people that are working in the in front line, but it's mostly at this point really the medical profession that's still suffering through this. That you know, trying to save lives. There's still people in the hospitals dying of COVID. Um, that have mostly, all of them are uh, people that have refused to get their vaccinations. I know a lot of musicians that have bought into the anti-vax. Um, mentality and have lost their gigs that they've had for years because they're not going to be hired unless they have proof of vaccination because nobody wants to invest what you have to do to, to take a tour out on the road and then have it be subject to something like, you know, just somebody going out and having dinner and coming back and infecting everybody else. Um, so thank you to all those people that are working so hard to, uh, to maintain some kind of uh, reasonable sensibility amongst all this and save lives. 
Um, I'm really looking forward to this. I can't wait to hit the road um, and play this first show and, and get us going. And uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a great tour. And uh, I hope uh, as many of you, of you as you can can come join us out there. Just wave. <laughs> it's about as close as we're going to be able to get this time. But we'll see. See how things progress. It's a couple, two and a half months. So lots of things go on during the course of that kind of a time frame. But uh, thank you, Van Dyke Parks, for including me in your musical life. I mean, it's been a, almost a half a century I've worked with this guy, and, and uh, the depth of his talent just always um, amazes me. I did an album with Inara George, Lowell George's daughter with him, and Orange Crate Art with Brian Wilson and him, and Gabby Moreno. Uh, all kinds of really amazing, interesting projects. He, he's the guy that's always going to bring something unique to, to the doorstep and say, so you want to do it. So that's that. I'm going to get practicing. Um, have a great day. I'll try to get back tomorrow. We will be off to Yuma tomorrow and, uh, and then off to L.A. So uh, I will talk to you soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.